Welcome to WRC2 Extreme Part 2. It's no surprise that the Swedish rally has so far only been won by Scandinavians. Temperatures dropped to minus 30, and even with the WRC car's four-wheel drive, studded tyres are needed to cope with the lack of grip. Some stages are even held on frozen lakes. But despite all this, Sweden is still one of the fastest rallies in the whole World Championship. Oh boy, it's time for round two of the 2002 WRC. We're going to skip the shakedown. We're going to Sweden. We're going in the snow. And oh boy. So here's our weather forecast for our first day of rallying here in Sweden. It's going to be cloudy in stage one and snowy in stage two. Temperatures drop to minus 30 at Celsius in Sweden. And the WRC cars need special studded tires to cope with the lack of grip. So yeah, we're going to be racing on, racing, rallying on snow and ice here for our second round of the championship. Swedish rally is always pretty, uh, pretty great. And then we go to the completely dry service area somehow. Not realistic. Her, her, her. Anyways, you see our uh, default setup for this rally. Um, I think the engineer setup doesn't really do anything. Pat post the uh, Monaco. I don't know why, but does or Monte Carlo. I don't know. Anyways, point is, not gonna touch the setup because I never touch the setup. Let's just go to our first stage, Fredericksburg reverse. Ooh, yeah, there we go. Reverse stage. Oh my god. But anyways. 6.3 kilometers, and uh, let's just get started. So, <clears throat> like I alluded to at the end of the last segment, I forgot to mention uh, how I'm playing this game, actually. Because I am playing a PAL game, after all. Um, and I am in North America, in the United States. So how could I be playing a European game in the U.S.? Well, I'll tell you. <clears throat> it's not because I have a PAL PS2. Nope, I didn't get one of those. I'm actually using my, uh, you know, NTSC PS2. Once again, how do I do that? Because there's region locking on the PS2. Well, it's called soft modding. As I said, uh, I kind of ish said in the last thing, I have a memory card on my PS2 for my PS2 that has a uh, program called Free Mic Boot, which is a modding uh, program for the PS2. All you have to do is insert the memory card into the PS2 boot modded. There's other, a couple other things you have to do to actually play uh, uh, PAL as well as NTSCJ games on this thing. Um, I don't think you can play actual like legit copies of the game, sadly. So what you do is you have to like either buy your own copy of the game, burn it to your or burn it, rip it uh, to your PC as an ISO and then burn that ISO onto a blank DVD-R using, uh, as well as patching that ISO with a thing called ESR patcher. <clears throat> but yeah. So you put the burnt DVD into your PS2, and before you actually let the game launch itself, you actually have to, uh, from the free make boot uh, menu, which gives you uh, more options than in the normal PS2 menu, you choose the ESR option, let let the disc uh, load, and bing bang bow, you can play European and Japanese games on your North American PS2. It's pretty cool. It's really good, and it's, you know, let me play games that I normally wouldn't be able to play. Unless I emulated them like WRC2. There's even some Formula 1 games I now have access to, because once again, there were some Formula 1 games in the early 2000s that were not, never released in North America. As well as, you know, some like Japanese exclusive games like Sega Rally uh, 2006, which is a really fun game. Even though the career mode is really confusing as I hit a tree. And hit another tree going reverse. Go me. That was beautiful. But yeah, Sega Rally 2006, which is really fun, although it's really cool. Career mode is confusing because it's all in Japanese and I can't read Japanese, but I still feel my way around the menus. It's still a really fun game. But this isn't Sega Rally. This is WRC. This is the World Rally Championship. 
Not only is this a World Rally Championship, this is a World Rally Championship 2 Extreme. There's no other version of this game, by the way. It's just they they tack the Extreme subtitle uh, onto this game, I guess, to... Well, there actually is a reason why they put the Extreme subtitle to the title of this game, because we actually have some uh, things we can unlock in this game. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and spoil it, so if you don't want to be spoiled, I'll, I'll show them off in, like, you know, the extras video, after all the championships are done. But, uh, oh hey, I won the stage by 13 seconds, by the way. I completely dominated this first stage. But, um, yeah, there's, uh, some cars you can unlock in this game called the Extreme Cars, ooh. And they're basically, like, just extremely fast. Like, it's very powerful. For but anyway, I'll get to that later. But, um, I won the first day, 13 seconds, over Marks the Grunholm, Roven Parra in 3rd, Carlos Sainz 4th, Richard Burns 5th, Alistair McRae in 6th. <coughs> so, those are, as of the end of Stage 1, those are the guys in the points. Every, all 21 drivers have finished Stage 1, so, already doing better than Monte Carlo, no retirements so far. Of course, the full rally standings, same as Stage 1 standings. And it's time for our marathon stage of the rally. Yep, every Stage 2 in the professional Championship has our marathon stage, so 14.87 kilometers, stage 2, Vargasen. So it is time for the long boy, almost 15 kilometers in length. Oh boy. Once again, load times, pretty short. In fact, they're short enough where I don't think I need to cut them out. I mean, yeah, it's like 5 seconds, but I'm lazy when it comes to editing, so the less editing I have to do, the better. <laughs> I mean, I will have still have to do, like, editing for each, like, between each stage and menu because of the whole widescreen, like, widescreen is only in the stages and then, you know, the menus are still 4x3, so, the 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 but anyways, that doesn't matter. So you'll see the final product and it'll be like, whoa! Does the game actually switch between 4x3 and widescreen? What the heck? It doesn't. It's called editing magic. Anyways, on our side of the stage here at Sweden. There's some in dirt and snow. With very, very little grip. Car sliding all over the goddamn place. As it should be. Also, something that was said in the uh, intro scene to this rally, the fact that, uh, I think he said, uh, there's never been a non, there, there's be basically never been a foreign winner of this rally, up to 2002, he said it's always been Swedish people, there's always Swedish winners, I don't know about the uh, validity of that, it's probably true, but, um, I think, I'm pretty sure, I, I can't, I honestly can't remember where the driver I'm driving as is from. I, I don't remember where Gardemeister is from. I think he's Finnish. Yeah, because I said Flying Finn at the start, yeah, so. This will be our first non-Scandinavian uh, winner of the Swedish Rally. Ooh. Isn't that just friggin' cool sliding going through, going through the, uh, the safety fence. Because, like I said, it's an actual, like, fence and not just a solid wall now, as opposed to WRC1. Flying top speed here over the snow, snowy jumps. It's totally not, you know, brown-inducing at all. Nope, not at all. Don't know what you're talking about. Oh, that was a lot tighter than I thought it was going to be. And we get reset to the track. That countdown to get back onto the uh, track is really fucking quick. And it's not three seconds, it's like three third seconds. Like three half seconds or something. Luckily, if that happens and you do get reset by the game, you do not get a penalty. It's only if you do a manual uh, reset through the uh, pause menu that you get a penalty. And luckily, I am just fucking flying through this stage. And, uh... Despite that crash and having to be reset, I still have the stage lead by quite a bit. Ooh, man. 
It feels like I have less grip on like the less snowy dirt than I do on the actual snow. Probably because of the studded tires. They probably work better on like actual snow instead of just dirt and gravel. <clears throat> makes sense to me at least. I don't know if it actually makes sense. Narrow here, lots of trees. Don't hit the trees. Barely miss the trees. Can't really see very well as well because the trees are just covering all of my surroundings. Whacking the shit out of that fence in, don't mind me. Luckily, like the fences and stuff don't really have any. Like, if you can drive through them, they don't really have any physics to them, so. They won't upset your car like the advertising boards can. It's good. Ooh, big jump over the turn. Holy crap, how did I survive that? There's... Wow. I have no idea how I managed to uh, not hit a tree or anything. Just crash spectacularly over that. <coughs> Lucky. Got really lucky, actually. Man, it wasn't wrong when you said Sweden was one of the fastest cars. Jesus. I'm co consistently going over like 70, 80, 90 miles per hour. Shit's quick, yo. I think we wouldn't be going that fast since we're going across snow and ice all the time, but here we are. Oh no, I did not slow down near enough for this turn. Through the fence, fuck that pole. Whoopsie. And this is another one of those games where, um, because of the more arcadey and slidey physics of this game, the handbrake is pretty unnecessary in this game. So I don't have to worry about that, at least. Oh, come on, grip, grip. Yes, grip. <clears throat> grip in that snow. To the final sector of the stage. Yeah, this has been a quick five minutes. Like, it doesn't feel like I'm spending as much time as I am on these stages, but yet, you know, the first fucking segment was an hour long. And, yeah, this stage has been going on for over five and a half minutes now. Just take it easy, don't want to run into those logs, because they will absolutely fuck my shit up. We're trying to follow the fencing here. Slow it down. There's the finish line, and I'm going to win this stage by well over half a minute over Marcus Grunholm. Very good. <clears throat> Very good. And I'm the only person to get a sub-six-minute stage time. By far. In fact, I think I was the only person to get a sub-630 stage time. So there we go, won that stage by half a minute over Grunholm. There's the rest of the results of this stage the marathon stage and once again all 21 drivers are still in the rally so that increases my overall lead to 45 seconds over Grunholm, Rogan Pair in third Burns and Science swap fourth and fifth and that's the only movement going on into points however outside of the points people are moving up and down all over the place Sebastian Loeb's in 16th damn bet you uh Bet you never would have heard that before. Anyways, it's time for day two of the Swedish Rally. Going to be starting in the snow, but it's going to... Well, it's not going to clear up, but at least it's going to stop snowing <clears throat> after stage three. So to the service area, once again, the front brakes are pretty worn out. The rear brakes are not as bad, and tires are fairly worn. So let's just fix the brakes and the tires, and let's move on to our third stage of the Rally. It is going to be 9.3 kilometers, Lehen Reverse. Let's go. And it looks like it is going to be another uh, late day, so... Stage 3 is going to be in the late afternoon. I'm sure Stage 4 will be at night. Oh, dear. 
We also got some fog. We we got some heavy snow. We got some we got some fog to deal with. All right. That was not in the weather forecast game. How dare. No. So this will be interesting to deal with. And by interesting, I mean, oh dear God, what am I gonna what am I got myself into? It's time for very low visibility. I cannot see it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to be uh, crawling around the stage. I will not be surprised if I lose this stage. Because, uh... I don't think I'm going to be taking very many risks here. Because I cannot see very much, or very far in front of me. Pray for weather conditions. Oh god, oh god, logs! Eh, I hit the logs. Damn it. Good, everything's fine. I'm okay. And after all that, I'm only one second slower than Grunholm at the first sector split. In third place. God, careful. Even the ones are like, ah. Uh, you know, the, uh, the quickest turns. Slightest bends. This is actually requiring a lot of concentration here to just make it through this stage. I actually can't see shit. I'm sure the next stage will be uh, just as fun because it will it'll most likely be a night stage. Oh, hey. Gain three seconds on going home in that sector. Actually, more than that. So I had 2.7 second advantage at the split. Oh, fuck. Don't mind me. Just going my own route. Go my own route, part two. Jump, nope, nope. I was not prepared for the turn after the jump. Aw, oh, I almost made it back on the road. Damn it, game. Why? Why you do this to me? I don't know where the left three is, but apparently it's there. And I completely missed it. Rising boards, careful. I want to flip my car over again. Again, I really don't need to push from the stage because everyone else is going slow. <laughs> Understandably so. So, you know, I should probably do the same. But nah, let's go flying instead. And another reset, goddammit. I want to recover on my own game. Don't hold my hand. Be careful. Reaching the end of sector four. Despite everything that's been happening to me, seven seconds up on Grand Home. Grand Home's going to be looking good. Get some very much needed points in this round since he retired, uh, I think he retired in at Monte Carlo. No, Richard Burns did. I forget the other three drivers that retired at Monte Carlo. Pretty sure Grunholm was one of them, before I'm wrong. Wouldn't be surprised if I'm wrong. I'm okay, everything's fine. Oh my god, the end of the stage, please. Ah. Yeah, I did it. I made it. I survived. With a, a pretty, pretty good gap as well. I have to say. So, hooray. That was, uh, that was quite a stage. I ended up winning by 11 seconds over Grunholm. That's the rest of the stage results. And we have our first retirement of the rally, Francois Duval, in Ford Focus. Poor Francois. So, lead is up to 57 seconds now over Grunholm in the overall rally at the halfway point. Got a decent advantage over third place. There's the rest of the standings. 
So, let's move on to stage 4, Fredericksburg. 6.3 kilometers, and it's going to be at night, 9 p.m. Also, <clears throat> this is the first stage of the Novice Championship Swedish Rally. Yeah, spoiler alert. Um, every single... Uh, every single stage layout, basically, for each rally is kind of, like, the same. By stage layout, I mean, like... Uh, I don't know how it's better to say it. <clears throat> for each rally, so... For every single rally, stages 4, 5, and 6 of the Professional Championship are stages 1, 2, 3 in that order in the uh, Novice Championship. Every single rally. Yes, I did my research. Oh my god. So we went from the low visibility of heavy fog to the low visibility of nighttime. Not sure which is worse, to be honest. Probably the fog. Oh god. Okay, hang on. I'm trying to cycle through the gears to get to reverse, all while just spinning my car everywhere, because I don't know... I don't know why, but subconsciously, like, I don't know how to hold the brake when I'm trying to, like, go into reverse. I just fucking stab the throttle and hope for the best. Yeah, that cost me a bunch of time. Holy shit, that cost me a bunch of time. 16th now in the stage. Six seconds behind whoever's leading the stage. Probably going home. He's been doing pretty strong here. It's okay, I have three more sectors to make up time. I probably won't win the stage now, but... Let's try to get as good of a finish as I can get. That's a pretty short sector. I think. Then not. Maybe I'm just full of shit. Anyways, onto the frozen lake we go. Which I believe we're on the frozen lake. I can't see because night. There we go. Getting nine spots in that sector. Lost. I think I lost a little more time to uh, the stage leader, but I'm at least back in the top ten. Ooh. There is just absolutely no grip on this lake. Like, this is just straight up ice. Like, snow on top of ice. Pretty crazy. I actually really like it. It's just pretty crazy. Should gain a lot of time in that sector. It's only three seconds behind, uh, I assume, Grunholm, home because I couldn't look up fast enough to see who was in what position around me. See, I'm up to third, though, in the stage. And out of the lake we go. Into the trees? No, please. Alright, not gonna win the stage, but... Oh, I'm gonna take second place. Just barely. No. That was a... That was a crazy-ass stage. Sketchy as hell. But, just made it. Just made it, and Grunholm's gonna win the stage by three seconds. Exactly four seconds faster than Carlos Sainz. It's interesting. Here are the rest, though. Excuse me, the rest of the results. And here are the rally standings after day number two here in Sweden. Still over 50 seconds ahead of Grunholm. So, very, very comfortable lead. So, let's move on to day number three here at Sweden. It's going to be partly cloudy for both stages, or clear conditions, I guess. So, won't have to worry about snow. Hopefully, I won't have to worry about fog. Actually, going to have some pretty good conditions here. So, cool. So to the service area, once again, just need to uh, fix the brakes and the tires, everything else is in good shape, so let's go to our final two stages here at Sweden, starting with stage number 5, Lehen, 9.3 kilometers, of course stage 2 in the Novice Championship, do I even need to continue saying that? Do I? I don't know. 
Anyways, it's time for stage number five. Here in Sweden. <coughs> Excuse me. Castrol logos everywhere on this Skoda. It's fucking everywhere. By logos and decals. There we go. In the clear day. Best conditions we've been on in this entire rally so far. Which is nice. Going a little too, uh, a little too much to the inside of that turn, don't mind me. Climbing up on the bank. Oh god, this way! Fuck your, uh, sector gate. Oh shit. Feeling like I have a little too much confidence right now just because of the fact that I can actually see where I'm going. So way the fuck down for these tight ass turns. Smooth. Yeah, it's really nice that like quick successions of turns have like the uh, the visual pace notes like grouped together. Makes it a lot easier to deal with. Or to know what the hell you're uh, approaching. <clears throat> Over jump? That sure was a jump, alright. Don't hit the log. Random ass logs everywhere. Log, log, something, something, log, blah, blah, random stampy log. You notice I'm out of every, I'm out of things to say now that I've explained all this stuff about the game. <clears throat> Just kind of moseying along here. It's wonderful. Wonderful Sweden, Swedish uh, snow. Pretty beautiful skybox, I must say. We are racing in, uh, or the stage is taking place in the morning. A little bit of sunshine there. Sun glare. And dominating the stage, 24 seconds up on the run home. So we're in the final sector. Good. This is smooth. Goes narrowing. Kind of flinging my uh, Skoda all over the place. And to the finish line. There we go. Take another very, very dominant stage win. Heck yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this replay because I kinda need a replay for thumbnailing purposes. So let's do that. At least it takes no time to save. Saving is a lot quicker in this game compared to WRC1. Everything's optimized. Everything. And better. No sacrifices were made for optimization. Anyways, here's the stage results. I won by 28 seconds over Grunholm, who had, who actually beat third place by like 13 seconds, so... There's that. No new retirements, and here are the updated rally standings. I now have a minute 22 advantage over Grunholm, who has a 45 second advantage over Roven Paris, so I'm pretty sure the top two are set in stone here, unless something horrible happens to either myself or Grunholm in this final stage. Speaking of, it's time for the final stage, 4.86 kilometers, of course the final stage of the Novice Championship, and now that I've mentioned that in both this round and at Mon Monte Carlo, I'm not going to mention that again, because like I said, it's the same for every rally, so. Yeah. 
I pretty much like showed off and explained all the differences between novice and professional, so. From here on, it's just fucking rally, yeah. So here we go, final stage here, Sweden. Oh crap. Going through all the fencing, don't mind me. It's fine, it's okay. Fairly short into this rally as well. It's like, wasn't the stage like under five kilometers? It's pretty short for a stage in this game. <clears throat> Stages usually range around the uh, seven to eight kilometer range, and then every rally has that marathon 14 kilometer stage. So, yeah, overall stage length, aver or average stage length, a bit longer than in WRC1. It's fine with me. More fun for me. I like games that have longer stages. Rally games that have longer stages. Still waiting for a game that isn't like, uh, what, what was it called? Mobile One Rally Championship or something like that on the PS1 that has like, uh, like accurate, uh, like accurate to real life length stages. Like every stage is like 12, 13, 20 kilometers, you know? Or fucking 50k's like a Corsica or something. That would be cool as heck. It's one major reason why I want to play that Mobile One Rally game. Like I've heard, like physics-wise, it's not very good, but it has like real-world map stages, and a lot of them to be at that, which is really impressive for a PS1 game, I must say. One day, one day, maybe, maybe, maybe. maybe. Anyway, WRC2 Extreme. That is the game on showcase today. I don't need to worry about any of those other games. This game having a really good run through this stage, dominating it. Although not as much as the previous stage, only seven seconds ahead of Panizzi. But uh, Grunholm's in third, so I need to worry about that. It's like, oh no, Grunholm's retiring at the end of the last stage. Nope. He is not, and this is a very short final sector, and there we go. Take the win in the final stage by 10 seconds to take a very, very dominant overall win here in Sweden. Alright, so Panizzi beats Grunholm in this stage, both in the Peugeots, but Grunholm is still going to take second overall. Here are the rest of the stage results. And here are the final rally standings after six stages, 21 minutes rally length. Marcus Grunholm finishes minute 33 behind me in second, but beats Rovenpera in third place by 50 seconds, almost exactly. Carlos Sainz takes fourth, Richard Burns takes fifth, and Gilles Panizzi with that final stage run moves up into the points. So we have four Peugeots in the points. All four Peugeots. One Skoda, one Ford. I think and think uh, the Peugeots are pretty strong. I don't know about you, but it seems like they're doing pretty good in 2002. And one retirement from this rally, Francois Duval, who retired, I believe, in stage three. So there is that. So let's go ahead and save. Now notice how quick this save is going to be compared to the save at the end of stage or sec uh, first segment. Yeah, there we go. It's already done. Before I can finish my sentence, so here are the points payouts for round two. Here are the manufacturer points, but they gave out a lot of points for this round. Holy shit. 10 for Skoda, 9 for Peugeot, deservingly so, since they had four cars in the points. 5 for Ford, and 2 for Mitsubishi. I don't know why. Once again, I have no idea how these points are allocated. Not a goddamn clue. Anyways, we win. We get our celebration thing. In the background, which you've already seen the full scene, so I don't need to show it again. Yay! So here are the updated point standings after two rounds of 14. Here in the WRC2 Extreme. I have a perfect 20 points. Marcus Grunholm. Okay, so he didn't retire from Monte Carlo. I was thinking of Richard Burns, I guess, then. Because he has nine points now for his second place, so... Then Jill Panizzi in third with seven, Harry Rovapera and Tommy Mackinnon tied for fourth with four points, Carlos Sainz in sixth with three. Here are the rest of the point scores. We have nine different point scores now 
after two rounds. And 10th through 21st, zero points. Here's the updated manufacturer standings. 20 points for Skoda, thanks to me. 13 for Perjo after that dominant run with having all four of their drivers in the points. Ford and Subaru tied for third with seven apiece. Citroen with five, Mitsubishi with two. And Hyundai is the only manufacturer left to get onto the manufacturer point board. And yeah, so that will conclude this segment of WRC2 Extreme. Hope you enjoyed. And next time we'll move on to round number three of the professional championships. So stay tuned for that. <laughs>